Southside Unified. <laughs> Snoop Lion. Hot Mike. There we go. Bit of Snoop Lion there early, but uh, look. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Snoop Lion. Um, it's always a good way to kick off a podcast yeah, with a bit of Snoop <laughs> Lion. Impro- impromptu karaoke. There we are. That's it. We're back. It's episode five of the knockoff. Uh, back here on Sunday. Re- back up effort after uh, throwing down on Friday night. We really let our hair down in that one. And... Uh, <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. It's the uh, three foundation members coming at you this afternoon, Knock Off Nation. We've got Danny Boy. He's back Hello. from Sydney. Yeah, feeling worse aware, but I'm here. I'm here, boys. We've got Chris checking in as well. What up, buddy? What's up, everybody? Man, can you believe, boys, this time next week, we know who wins out of Diaz McGregor 2. Mm, big, big card, man. And mainly, obviously, carried... Oh, there's there's good fights on it, but mainly carried by that fight. Absolutely, there is the main. There's three main card fights on mention. We're going to break them down a little bit for you, get into detail, probably give you our picks as well leading into fight week. Uh, dare say we'll probably break it down after the cards come on too. So we're going to put our fucking ball sack on the line, go out with our predictions. Uh, feel free to rag on us on all sorts of social <laughs> media and shit at how wrong we get them. Uh, first up on the uh, on the main card for us, Cowboy Cerrone, Rick Story at one seventy. Mm. Fucking hell Cowboy fights a lot man mm. He's yeah. almost on like Every other card now It's crazy How many is pu- How many has he pumped out This year thus far This would be Have to be three or four Yeah at least. I reckon I reckon he'd this be three or four Yeah definitely August <laughs> We're in August His record so. is 30 and 7 man Wow Jesus Christ And and the vast majority Of those fights Would be in The WEC Would be in the, You know Would be So that'd just be any Mate, Not necessarily fight. now though No 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 yeah. I'm, I'm just saying In that oh, From that it, era onward oh, Yeah oh, yeah, 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 yeah So he would have a whole bunch of fights On his amateur career Under that Like That's just professional fights He in, was He was lined up at one point in time To fight Carlos Condit In a kickboxing match Just mm. locally in Albuquerque Like when they right. didn't know each other right. But that wouldn't contribute To this uh, record no, this would, would be yeah. pure no. professional MMA record. Yeah, you're definitely. Dead, you're dead right. But inverse story, uh, story's a tough guy. You, you can't sleep on him at all, but you know that crowd in Vegas, they're all pulling for Cowboy, and Fuck I yeah. personally think he gets it done. Yeah, me too. And I think that th- especially coming off the fight that, that Donald Cowboy Cerrone's just had in Patrick Cote, there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities there. You know, when when you talk about the type of fighter that Rick Story is, whereas he's a you know, he's a real grinder with a, a real heavy chin, likes to come forward, likes to put pressure on, you know, the, the exact same dude is Patrick Cote and, and Donald absolutely manhandled him. So he he'll he'll come in with confidence, you know, into this fight. So I, I definitely think Cowboys you know, got the got the medal to get this one done That's as it. well. Just these sort of mid tier fights for Cowboy. Like, I, I'd I'd have to fact check exactly what his ranking is at one seventy, but I don't think he's a top ten guy no, at the minute. I, th- I think he's top fifteen. And, though. and when when the lights aren't as bright, Cowboy just shines. Mm. He seems to come in relaxed every time. It's True. when it gets to the number one contender or the all the title fights where it's sort of. I don't know, he seems to get in his own head, but I think he's going to come out loose next weekend and just fucking pick, pick story apart. Yeah, you're dead right when you say that it, it's the non... I mean, every fight is a big fight, obviously. You know, when you're doing it on a main card and, and it's in front of tens and hundreds of thousands of people, sometimes millions of people, I mean, you, you, especially this card will be anyway, you know you know you want to put on a performance of the of the night every single time that you step out. But, um, but yeah, Cowboy just... Ever since he's moving to 170, he just looks like a dominant force there too, you know. And you, like you said, when it's away from the the big sort of one time show type fights, the title fights and whatnot, he he definitely brings it. Fucking a co-main event: Anthony Rumble Johnson and Glover Teixeira over three rounds. <laughs> three round fight means these guys have to come out and fucking go for it. Not that you have to tell them mm. to go for it. But don't do not blink in this one. Oh, this yeah. is an unbelievable fight. Absolutely, man. And any guy can just absolutely knock the other guy out cold with one shot, which is exciting. But I think that Glover realistically wouldn't be looking to do that. Wouldn't be looking to trade leather with Anthony John- Johnson when he knows that he's got a distinct advantage if it goes to the ground. Maybe not in the wrestling department, you know, because R- Rumble is a really, really powerful dude in the clinch. But I think that if if Glover can get him to the ground where he can look to get like mount or something like that, he can definitely put Rumble in a lot of, in a bad spot. That's and it. we've seen Rumble in those bad spots many a time. And I think it might be the deeper it goes, the better it will be for Glover. Oh yeah, if very he, much if, so. If he can Daniel Cormier style it, if he can just 
he's going to have to eat some shots. Like that's that's a reality of it. Yeah. It's whether he can take them exactly is the question. Because yeah, yeah. Anthony Johnson, there's no no harder hitter in that division. I, I don't than think him. that there could potentially be another heavy hitter like uh, someone who hits as hard as him in the sport. Mm. I think that he he might be the the pinnacle of the that one one shot knockout power you know conversation of who are the heaviest hitters he probably sits at the top of that list for for most people or at least in the top 3 yeah he's he's on the podium he'd have to exactly. be he'd have to be on the podium alongside him Mark hunt, hunt and yeah hunt yeah with his r- track record absolutely i'd say i'd arguably throw in someone like a junior dos santos oh, or absolutely. something like that he'd too. Be in i that. think he he'd could be in absolutely that. crack yeah, and, and I mean, I tell you, someone who, who really does belong in that conversation, who has recently announced the comeback, is Shane Carwin. Mm. I mean, that, that dude, when he, th- when he used to throw, I mean, that, that knockout of, of Gabe Gonzaga, where he just knocks him out with that short little, you know, shovel right or whatever he throws, and he just lands it on the chin, and just Gabe just, boom, like, yeah. like, uh, unconscious before he even touches the canvas. And he... Uh, Carwin started his career, I think, eight and eight knockouts. Like he hadn't been outside yeah. the first three minutes in the yep. first eight fights. That's that's when they sold yeah. that Brock fight. That's right. It, and, and what a fucking fight! Oh, that was. can you? Still, still one of my favorite fights. Yeah, yeah, I can remember us being that excited for that fight because it was finally the first fight where we were going to see someone like Brock Lesnar fight someone his own size yeah. because previous to that it had sort of been like frank Mir and and he hadn't quite he just got dominated on the ground and then it was randy couture and randy couture was really effectively a light heavyweight anyway you know so so that it was the first time someone was going to get in there who was a big motherfucker oh you know? shit yeah man and look main event all the hype is done so many questions came out of that first match up a lot of them will be answered by this time next weekend who you got, Danny? I'm sticking with Connor, man. I think he's gonna. Um, I think he's gonna come with an actual game plan this time. I mean, last time he got Nate on was it less than two weeks' notice? Yeah, twelve days. Yeah. And I mean, you, you make the same argument that Nate didn't have the the opponent to prepare for, and he came in and and Connor had a full camp. But I think Connor's shown good strategy as a fighter, and I think that's probably a good thing that comes out of that um, the the straight blast gym. They uh they've got like good fight analysis and stuff like that and I th- I reckon with a f- with a proper game plan for that opponent and you know doing the fight camp with somebody that imitates Ni- uh, Nate's you know physical dimensions and Lurch. his style and all that sort Lurch. of stuff yeah. yeah I think um I'm sticking with my boy I'm sticking yeah. with Connor fair, and fair enough too man like I mean I've I've gone back and forth in my own head about it but knowing the obsession that McGregor has. That's I, it. I, I don't think he's leaving any stone unturned in he's, his preparation. I mean, he, he's obsessed. That's so, the greatest way to describe that's right. it. Yeah. Like self, self-proclaimed la- in the fight week last time, he was having like two steak dinners in, in fight week at, and doing sort of all like Edo Portal movements to the point where he had blisters on the balls of his feet. All you see him doing now is bulk cardio work. He's got to um, to go he's got Ido um, working with him again he, in these he final does, days. He does, yeah. but he's got um, nowhere near I'll, as much. I'll, yeah, I'll, I've seen a lot of. Um, road cycling and like cardio aspects yeah, like that that McGregor's yeah. done and he's bought a bunch of uh unorthodox guys who are tall middleweight sort of boxers into the uh into his training camp to try and prep for Nate a bit more for that length yeah that, that there really isn't the same I guess argument this time around of who Connor's training with because this this training camp he's brought in some really really high level guys like he's boxed with some you know some European national champions you know pro boxers with real what mm. not padded pro boxing records he, he's brought in that that Brazilian world jiu-jitsu mm. champion to roll with him constantly so he, he's obviously taking this fight as serious as he could possibly take this and he's brought in people to plug those gaps yeah. but Nate, Nate has been training with those people for years. Uh, you did like, right. He, he's, he boxes with Andre Berto. He, you know, he rolls with the Gracies. He, you know, has been there for 10, 15 plus years, that's, you know. That's so right. I, was, I still think he can get the stand-up guys in and he can close that gap and get used to the, the length and reach and how to get in and work the angles on those bigger guys. But I still think if the fight goes to the floor, he's getting put away. Yeah, still yeah. he doesn't want to be he, there long. Yeah, he, he doesn't He doesn't want to hang around on the mat. He has mm. to be really, really active for mine uh, if to avoid 
Nate's fucking nasty shit on the floor. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I really liked from Connor last time out was was that he he didn't seem to hesitant to throw ground and pound though. Like and and he never really does because he's he does throw such big shots that he knows that if he lands from from that mounted position or something like that he's hurting people. Mm. And I think exactly like you guys said in terms of just coming in with better cardio, he's just going to look to to try and land those big shots but land them more frequently and over a longer period of time and just wear Nate down with them because that's going to be the Conor McGregor game plan of Hey, I did it for a round and a half, or I did it for two. You know, the better bit of two rounds. I need to do that for five, and and hopefully that changes the game for him. But I really don't think it will. I'm, it. I'm, tip, I'm tipping Nate. Yep. Me- do you have a method for it? Like we'll all, we'll all put our tips for this main event on, so we can look right. back upon upon reflection. Uh, yeah. What what's your method, Nate? By I reckon Nate by a, a submission. But I'll I'll have it really late in the piece. Like I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw Nate maybe drop rounds one, two, potentially even three, and and just see him storm late and 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 take him. Wow, wouldn't that be something too? Yeah. I, I'm hoping he goes deep as well. I want to yeah. see how both how both guys hang after 20 minutes. I want to see McGregor have to go that deep. Yeah. We, we know Nate can go that far. Yeah. He went five hard rounds with RDA at 55. Yeah, exactly. And was still there at the end. His leg fucking basically fallen off from leg kicks, but mm. he's still there throwing volume. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. I'm going to go... Personally, I'm going to go uh, McGregor decision. I think McGregor might... As you say, Nate may be able to hang with him, but I think Connor might be able to steal rounds off him mm. this time around, I- yep. if I had to choose. Yep. I'll go you one further. I'll get uh, Connor to TKO finish in uh, inside three. Nice. Oof. Nice. There yeah, you go. Wouldn't yeah. that be something too? That's oh. that's what uh, Dana and the new owners would be fucking praying for because it sets up a rubber match. Mm. Financially, it works for both guys if Connor w- wins this fight. Would he have to go defend his featherweight before yes. doing yeah, that? He yeah, he would yeah, have to. Yeah, he, I they, think from a marketing perspective, mm. it would be better anyway. You wouldn't want to yeah. see another rematch and they'd wanna, after and this. They would want to move Nate on because Nate's star power, if he comes out and puts McGregor away again, he yeah. blows up even more so this mm. time around. Yeah, I'm so, sure they've got a strategy in mm. place for every possible yeah. scenario. The, I honestly think they could potentially be angling to try and get Diaz brothers' belts for both weight classes, like 55 and 70. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Nick's yeah. back now, but there was rumours flying around this like during the week, and I'm not sure if they're true or not, but one of them was Diaz Sonnen at... Madison Square Garden at 85. Oh, True. really? I that'd don't like that. That'd be a bad fight yeah, for Nick. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, that'd be no. a really bad fight for Man, him. Man, they've been um, like a, a couple of these UFC, I think UFC Russia on Instagram have been playing like, they'll do like a 60 second video on Instagram of fights and shit like that. So I've been watching these sort of like minute highlight videos of heaps of fights. This morning, I watched one on the plane, um, the fucking Nick BJ Penn fight. And oh, Nick just yeah. fucking lights yeah. him up. Pa, pa, that's pa, pa, I think pa, 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 I, pa. I still maintain that's probably the best Nick we've seen in that fight. He tooled him. Uh, yeah, he tooled him. Just Some the of volume. Those body shots. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Bj just wasn't of size. You yeah. know, he, he's really legitimately a forty-fiver. Mm. You know, and 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 that's you know he was. What would that have been at one seventy? One seventy. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's Nick Diaz who fought Anderson Silver yeah. at eighty-five. Yeah. And, no, I mean and that's. Hung. It doesn't, doesn't look small. It doesn't hung, look small. Hung with Anderson. Um, <laughs> I know what you're thinking after Friday. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. I'm looking forward to listening to that one, boys. Yeah. It sounds like it was a good night. Yeah, good, good, good time was had by all. We've had, had a bit of feedback on it too as well. And yeah, <laughs> some have liked it. We haven't heard from any that haven't, but I'm yeah. sure you're out there. <laughs> if, if, you could, if you could be an absolute specialist at either jiu-jitsu or like kickboxing... Which one would you go for if you could be a black belt in either one of them? I don't know. I'd love to be able to throw like some crazy high head kicks yeah, and shit yeah, like that. Have yeah, that yeah, dexterity yeah. in your limbs not, where you can. Not that there is boom. like full like belts in kickboxing, but yeah, to be that elite level sort of striking like yeah, a K one like K one middleweight champion. Yeah. You can you can use your ground game all you want, but if you're gonna come near me, I'll just fucking put you away on the feet before you get there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like a common street fight, you know what I mean? If someone's a a blue belt in jujitsu. Hey, fair enough, but I think a world K1 champion is going to be able to put that guy away on the street. <laughs> yeah. You're going to need to be a high-level black belt to be able to contend with the K1 sort of champ, I reckon. Oh, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> like, so, I don't know, that's fucking. full armchair quarterback <laughs> status yeah. there, having never done both. But yeah, hey, I can imagine, right? Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I just love to be able to like, you know, bass rooting style, defend yourself yeah, in a yeah, pub, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, if, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, what I'm what saying I mean. too. Like, absolutely, yeah. He's got all his like his <laughs> techniques, just like inside leg kick, face punch, kick to the pills, like smash just to be able to do <laughs> smash that. him in the chair, yeah. and smash him in the face with a chair, yeah, yeah. like B- kick him in yeah. the dick and balls, pull key to the throat type thing. I think, yeah. Throat, just, thing. I think <laughs> it would, yeah, it would be a fun, yeah, it would be, it would be, it's a so funner, good though, a funner yeah. activity. I think yeah. being able to light people up in pubs rather than yeah. being able to strangle them. Oh, personally, anyway, and and especially like, can you imagine just trying to inflict that form of offense where you would just almost so survival mode based that you were qu- like quite literally glassing people hitting them with pool like just started mm. swinging pool cues like yeah. just get me the fuck out of here i'm just gonna hurt as many people oh. as possible yeah like full-on hand-to-hand combat it's mm. you or me somebody has yeah, to die like yeah. fight to the death yeah style. exactly i'm gonna grab this thing oh, if there's something sharp i'm gonna grab him and stab him with it it's fucking like, it's fucking nutty though that like as a species, we've done that our whole lives, man. Like, inflict fucking violence on each other and shit like that. It's it's something just, like, in our DNA. And we even, like, back in gladiatorial days, they made a spectacle of it and stuff. Mm. And, and we we love the shit out of the UFC and, and MMA. And it's, like, it's a spectacle of hand-to-hand combat, like, man-on-man yeah. violence. Like yeah, exactly. It's because, it, yeah, it's, it's just a primal thing that, that obviously animals attack each other to to eat one another and to, to procreate and all that yeah. sort of shit. So. I think if you didn't like, if you, from an outsider's perspective, you might think that like watching that shit sadistic and that sort of like view that people had of like, you know, the fucking gladiators and stuff like that. But what I really appreciate is when you can see somebody who's such a professional and, and they're just, you know, so so technical in what they do that it's not really that aggressive and violent it's almost like you know you watch anderson silver like do his thing and it's like he's just in flow he doesn't necessarily Mm. look super aggressive it's just he looks like he's doing his job you know it's awesome to see people at that level of skill in that in that particular discipline excuse me flow (laughs) 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 oh that's such a funny movie but i tell you what a a movie that i saw earlier in the week doing the rounds on uh iphone at the moment is of a prominent NRL player, like he don't we don't even have to say his name on the record, but a, an NRL player is sort of had been stood down. It's a video do, <laughs> doing the rounds. I want to I want to show Danny this because he hasn't seen it. We're talking about it off air, and I want to get his reaction to it on uh, sort of live on air. This is uh, so this is um, come out in the news just this weekend. Or? Uh, recently, but the video seems to have surfaced this weekend. But a, a pl- oh, right. bloke's been stood down sort of a fortnight ago. He plays for uh, he plays for Para. <laughs> so I'm just hitting play on this. <laughs> oh shit. I don't even know if I can describe what I'm <laughs> <laughs> watching give, here. Give, but give I us think a rundown, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're going to provide a full video, video breakdown. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you'd think they would have learnt by now, but oh, I guess, you know, man. video phones and shit are that pervasive that it's just like you can't help it. Mm, if you're if you're an NRL player and you're living that rock star That's lifestyle right. and you just happen to be chugging a fucking tinny out of some chick's pussy on a fucking <laughs> Saturday <laughs> night. Like, somebody yeah, gets it on video. That's right. Fucking like a, b- hell. B- being an athlete in the... I won't lim- mention yeah. his name, but shout out. Yeah, fuck. yeah. look, man. Be- being an athlete in the limelight like, like, like that, um, it can't be easy. No way. Because you'd it have def- people yeah. throwing pussy at you like that. that. Absolutely, oh, absolutely, man. man. Those guys, like, you know, you go to the bloody Normanby Hotel oh. in Brisbane on, on, mm, a, on right. a Sunday yeah. night and there's like, you know... A lot of girls that um, that are attracted to rugby league players yeah, in Australia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that Eddie, Eddie Murphy joke where he's walking along, like dropping the pussy. Like, oh, sorry, I dropped that pussy. <laughs> Just go there, go to rock up the Normby, play a little game of any, meeny, miny, mo. Man. Yeah, That's basically yeah. the reality of it. But it sucks for those guys too because at the same time, I can under, I can fully understand the you know, it's sort of a national sport and doesn't look good in the public eye, but Everyone in that room was a consenting adult. No, no one was there against their exactly. will. Exactly. Every, every, yeah. Everyone was there, fucking having a pretty good time. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Did look like a bad no, time. That's <laughs> right. no, no, no. Def- definitely, like it, it, 
uh, looked alright, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I think the whole sort of you know holding professional athletes to some sort of moral role model status is um, is a pretty weird thing because I mean we don't do it with rock stars and kids idolize rock stars and it's like they're professional athletes uh, like idolize their athletic prowess but you don't necessarily have to um, you know create a whole image for them that kids need to model their lives or ideologies on and stuff like that they're basically just flawed humans like the rest of us yeah. I, mean. I get That's the argument right. for it though like can you imagine obviously as impressionable as kids are and whatnot if you had an athlete that was allowed to just snort a whole bunch of rack and still play and be good and you know make all this money and whatnot kids would aspire for, aspire to that like they would you know look to to emulate that and think that they could achieve the same level of of performance whilst living the same lifestyle and his name's john jones yeah, <laughs> yeah. well there you go right. yeah exactly I guess. I guess. that john. person has a name <laughs> I I imagine. what's up john oh, yeah. <laughs> but i mean if it's like you know if it's somebody with the athletic prowess of john jones that you're idolizing it's not necessarily like the two aren't necessarily linked you exactly know what i mean right, like man. he just happens to do that and be that good it's not like do this and you will be that good if it, like and i think if you give people the you know enough credit that they'll know that you know fucking they're not putting two to two two and two together thinking that it's like john jones's rail habit that mm. um mm. that's made him such a badass athlete Spe speaking of a dude who would have a big piece <laughs> <laughs> leave you two alone yeah. and it instantly goes to fucking <laughs> black hard, dick chat for fucking, fucking half an hour just bro science <laughs> <hard> <laughs> Oh, uh, Weary we, we, oh, had his contributions to it though too, don't worry. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We definitely dragged it down that Good avenue. Lord. <laughs> but, uh, we were talking about having big nights on Friday night too. Like Jared had shared a story of his of how he'd stayed awake for a damn right dangerous amount of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it that way. You, you've just come back from Sydney and uh, got yeah. stuck into it pretty hard. Oh, yeah. I had a pretty pretty rough end to last night to say the least, exactly buddy. Right. Break One of those just, oh, like, you know, just drinking all day pretty much from, from lunchtime and uh, and just by, you know, midnight that night, everybody was sideways. The the dude that I went down to Sydney with, I was, I'm actually best man at a wedding, so we're going down there to get suits fitted and stuff. And, um, did that did that even happen or you just got yeah sauce? yeah no no we we got all that done like i was there for a few days so um but just last night yeah like a boozy lunch turned into um a boozy dinner and a night out and it was just a long long period of time pretty much everybody went sideways by about midnight and uh my buddy that i went down with we were sharing an airbnb and um gave him the key mistakenly like wrote the wrote the address on his hand for him just like dude just go home like leave the door open because remember there's only one key or like put your phone next to your head so you can definitely hear me like when i get home i'll only be like a couple more hours or whatever and um and then uh i ended up getting the um getting the cab home probably like two two hours later so maybe like two thirty, three o'clock this morning and um get back to this airbnb have to like jump the fence out the front because he's not answering his oh. phone and then mm. like i like climb up the um climb up the stairs to like try and get in i'm rapping on the door like nothing no response whatsoever getting like super frustrated i'm so tired and i'm like got one hand on the um because it's like two, two or three stories up and i'm like jumped over the railing because there's these like tiny little like winder louver windows type things that i'm trying to yell through and so I've got like one hand on the railing, like hanging off the side of this building, trying to like scream at my mate, like through the window and like rap on the window, nothing. I'm just like, He was in there, passed out? For, for like for all I knew, like I hadn't seen him since the pub and yeah. I was like, go home, I'll meet you there in, in, in a couple of hours. And he was sweet at that point. He was like, yep, sweet as man, I'll see you there. But like obviously along the way had um, like gone somewhere else had gone to um another mate's place and and crashed oh. there and just not told me about it and then so uh. i'm like banging on the door for a good like 20 minutes until um until some guy comes out from underneath because it's a big like apartment complex where lots of people live in studios and um and this dude comes out and he's like you're right man and i was like hanging off the balcony i was like do you have a ladder mate and he's like yeah i got a ladder but where are you gonna put it and i like had a look and i was like there's nowhere to put this fucking ladder like i'm i'm basically screwed and i was like yeah no don't worry about it mate all good and You're then just so um, fucking drunk at this point too oh man i'd been drinking since <laughs> since midday so like yeah, <laughs> yeah oh fuck. just next just level at the end of your rope 
and um and then so i sat down in this little like courtyard or whatever that's just in the um in the sort of surrounds of the apartments and just curled up and like tried to tried to just go to sleep outside in in winter in sydney like on the concrete (laughs) i'm just like this doesn't get any worse right now like Mm. and then um and then this guy has walked in to the uh, in, into the complex and I was like, oh, hey, mate, you, you don't know, like you don't have a spare key to 19 or anything like that, do you? And he's um, and he's like, nah. And I was like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, um, have a nice night. And then he walks into his um, walks into his apartment and then comes out like maybe 10 seconds later and he's like, you can crash on the floor in here if you want, man. Like, and I was just like, thank you so much, dude. This like... Mm. Um, brazilian guy or whatever barely spoke any english but i've like walked into his apartment and it's like um like tiny little studio apartment so it's like there's the like double bed right there as soon as you open open the door and there's his like missus asleep like in bed and then she wakes up to see me and me and her like boyfriend or whatever in the fucking apartment she's like no 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 like starts freaking out and shit like this is like fucking three o'clock in the morning not again like (laughs) not again i mean i didn't like i was like man this this guy might be gay and might try one on me but like i'm fucking gonna sleep on the floor like and i can i can beat this guy's ass i reckon if he (laughs) gets physical i'll I'll be able to get out of that situation but right now i just want to fucking be warm and yeah i want some shelter i'll I'll copper schooling for the roof (laughs) 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 i'm gonna suck that dick (laughs) (laughs) pay the rent Oh, oh man! No, and then um, and then so like I've sort of like calmed her down and then just like uh, explained my situation and she was all sweet and I just like slept on the floor for like two hours and then uh, and then my mate finally like must have got his phone on and called me and he was on his way back and then got like maybe another half an hour of sleep when I got back into the apartment before I had to get on the plane and um as i'm leaving i just got like 20 bucks in a piece of paper that i had in my wallet and just wrote thank you so much and like slipped under his door Mad. and um yeah, nice. yeah obrigado they, they were fucking cool they were like yeah just fucking Life talk about time yeah. and need but um bro fucking back at the airport like it was bad your, like, ma- your mate ha- was pretty haggard as well he uh w- we were si- we boarded the plane he had a coffee and i had um i had a sausage and egg from from mac yeah. And we boarded the plane and we're sitting on it. It hasn't even sort of started to taxi to drive off yet to taxi. And um and he's just like, oh, give me that spew bag. I think I'm gonna be sick. And oh, I was like, no. I was like, mate, if if you can hold it in, because like if they'll kick you off the plane if uh if you're violently ill at the start of the flight, yeah. and they can still get you back in the airport. Yeah. They'll be like, we don't want to take a liability. It's yeah, for sure. Their mo, but um, fuck. For like even though it's only an hour and a half from Sydney or whatever, that was one of the most brutal flights that I've done mm. in a fucking long time. Oh, there's man. nothing fun about flying. And I was over. pretty close to to needing the spear bag at the end of the flight myself. Mm. Both would have looked a million bucks as Ooh, well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Lady beside us gave us some tissues because Brad's just there trying to like quietly vomit into this bag. He, Sh- uh, shout out, Brad. Man, he's not a. He's, <laughs> he's, not, he's not scared to. He's uh, not a quiet vomiter either, man. Generally, he. I, I commented. <laughs> I commented how um how quiet he was and he's right. like i'm trying man i'm yeah. not normally like that no, yeah, and i was I'm like you've done real well mate <laughs> him spew a bunch of times like a yeah like a that's real, what i'm like man yeah, i said they'd be hearing me up the back yeah, of the plane if i was letting it go yeah. now like the captain opens the door like well, what's going yeah. on back yeah. there like, i actually yeah. get like sore testicles sometimes from wrenching that heart <laughs> <when I> spew, <laughs> legit <laughs> legit really? i've had yeah. that before <laughs> oh, <laughs> sore man, testes. Wow. Like, <laughs> where you just your abs hurt and yeah. shit like that because you've just been fucking heaving up yeah that's the worst that's <laughs> just the worst <laughs> that's hilarious dude. God, I, I didn't yeah. actually even know what that was pretty much like up until recently where i got like a a 24-hour bug thing that just absolutely crippled me and had me spewing every 20 minutes on on the knocker you know pretty much for about six or seven hours straight you know so it was just brutal fuck being that sick oh yeah i've been that sick a couple of times uh, basically alcohol poisoning yeah yeah, like early days when you've um when you're testing your limits and stuff like that that's just there's nothing no worse feeling as far as i'm concerned is that is that when you know you've had too much booze and you're going to be sick for a good couple of hours paralytic oh. yeah oh that th- there's a night that stands out for me when i got to that point um drinking absinthe on a weekend away up in ellie beach up there in the uh wit sundays incredible like su- such a fun weekend but huge friday night kicked on into saturday we're down like get, went down to the local pub just to get a feed gambling on some horse racing and like pokies and shit won a bunch of money 
bought two bottles of absinthe and just went back to the hotel. And there was a, probably a crew of about 10 people there just ripping into the absinthe, but I'd had fucking plenty, man. Like, <laughs> r- like ridiculous amount. Just ended up paralytic, propped up in a bathtub, just throwing up uncontrollably all over no, my own self. Like, yeah. It was the safest way. Because everyone still wanted to go out. Because this was like, I was passed out by about five in the afternoon. Everyone wants to go out up in the club, like chase some tail. Mm-hmm. And um, they're like, oh, well, we've got to prop him up. So they put up towels all around me in this bathtub. So it was impossible for me to like put my head back. Yeah. And I just sat up and just repeatedly just chunted this green fluid all, oh. over, my, uh, all over my Was chair. the water in the bath? No. You were just sitting in there. Were yeah. you like, yeah. had, you had your clothes on? A uh, pair of jocks, I think. pair of jocks from on. Memory, yeah. <laughs> but just gr- full right. green fluid, ridiculous. Summer or winter? Uh, summertime. But summertime. Just no, you'd have been right then. Paralytic. Yeah. Just dangerously yeah. intoxicated. Yeah. Would have made for a good um, profile picture. Yeah. I, I still that's, have I still have the picture of me laying on the bed <laughs> throwing up what, actually from that. What oh. would be the first, t- the, the earliest memory that you can remember of being that, that paralytic? So where you've just lost all control, you've uncontrollably oh. sick. Probably the, fir- the most of the first few times mm. trying alcohol yeah, exactly. because it was like you didn't know what this substance was. And I think it, it just goes to show how fucking crazy it is like it's a poison. as a substance, you oh, know, and yeah. the fact that you can there's bottle shops on every every suburb corner, you know, and, you, and it's like you go and you can buy this crazy poison that's just, you know can fucking put an insane effect onto your body I can kill you can, can yeah. absolutely, absolutely kill you yeah. if you if you drink enough of it you know so there's no fucking around cirrhosis with cirrhosis of the liver liver <laughs> liver <laughs> <laughs> i read this crazy crazy article on um the conversation during the week about uh the um it's called survival of the fittest the changing shapes and sizes of olympic athletes and it's like it talks about from the beginning of the olympics tradition like what the body to- average body type was for you know like different events and stuff like that and how it's changed over the last you know 200 years i guess it would be from um 1896 to 2016 and it's like uh for the shot put for example the average height of a um a shot putter back then was uh 180 centimeters and weight 63 kilos Oh, Jesus. And, uh, and now ring du- doubled. Neil Magny. Now the average <laughs> height and weight is 197 and 141. 141. 141, that's what that's a shot a putter big is. Human. Yeah. That's a big human. Yeah. And I mean, I wonder if some of it is just like you just found the better better people for the job sort of thing as well. But, um, but it's crazy that, you know, there's obviously that's an argument to show that we, we have evolved as a, as, even yeah. as an organic organism over the mm. last fucking 200 years. You're dead right. You the didn't. um the sprinters like 400 meter sprint was um h- average height 170 centimeters and average weight 60 k kg and uh in 2016 178 and 77 kilos so a fair bit bigger for a 400 runner fucking that's a 400 fucking runner. tough event man oh 400 400 is grueling but one of the th- it's funny you mentioned like these sort of like body statistics because we know that the training and equipment and the technology towards every sport basically as has enhanced gotten more refined ten, tenfold yeah and the women's 100 meter sprint final was on today in rio jamaican girl run it ran 1072 which is fucking quick like very very quick the world record and olympic record was set by florence griffith joiner like flojo famous american olympian she ran 1049 in 1988 88 it's so that like would have been no, soul so she or whatever. was she was point three of a second quicker than they were yeah, today yeah. in 1988 yeah, yeah right. and yeah. had been popped later in her career not at the olympic meet but at some points for peds well, well that that's the sort of era that that peds really started getting a lot of a lot of press in yep. in the the public sort of stream anyway of professional sport Definitely. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's and i mean and, uh, and you you know it depends on your how you want to quantify peds as well i mean as a species since the 18th century there's all kinds of fucking supplements and stuff that we use to enhance our ourselves it's not necessarily just what they class as like illegal performance enhancers like testosterone and, and that sort of thing. So I think, you know, that's, I guess we're probably aiding that, that evolution for sure. But, um, but yeah, that's like, you know, fucking all the, all the nutritional choices we make and stuff like that, you could argue are essentially like performance enhancing fucking substances. Yeah. But then like there's that. also like, there's that, but then there's also like a, a band list that an organization puts together and says, these are the substances you cannot have in your body. So like, don't yeah. fuck with these. 
and then people still fuck with those, mm. you know, mm. and get mm. pop busted fucking with those, and then that obviously has that cloud of shadiness around yeah. it. Yeah, the um the basketball one is uh the 18th century dude is 182 centimeters, so my height, and 74 kilos, <laughs> and uh and now it's 206 centimeters and 104 kilos. Wow, yeah, someone like Shaquille. But the uh, the basketball man. guy that they've got here the, in the 1903 champs photo is a Probably white dude oh, i was gonna say he'd be, he'd be <laughs> yeah, white yeah. as a motherfucker <laughs> man it, yeah it. looks th- like th- he's from sussex because what what year was that uh 18 1896 that wouldn't have been too far removed from slave days like where where black people would have dead set been slaves for white people in in the southwest yeah well i think like yeah, yeah, back yeah, then, yeah 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 it wasn't it was only like 60 years ago that they had slaves like really yeah. oh true i thought it was yeah. well and truly into the other i think it was yeah. late i think it was late 18th century or potentially early 19th century that it was like no longer um no longer legal to kill aboriginal people for a while when settlement came it was just like that was that was cool like you could just you yeah know, it, true it was it they it was just thought that they were dying out anyway so it was like they, you could massacre insane amounts of like black wow. people that's just hard to a- fathom Aboriginal it people. is yeah. 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 Grow, growing up in our time like how just sitting back and just letting that happen Have, oh, having like, an absolute yeah. disdain for a like a a, a species of people That's that you, you're happy to just wipe them out like yeah, yeah they called Pretty it horrific. um they called it smooth the dying pillow because they thought that um they thought like you know they were basically on the way out anyway so we'll just continue it on and it was thought like that's what they would it's, it's just crazy that like as a society like you know colonial times they made those decisions and stuff but you, like frontier days you know fucking warring tribes and all that sort of stuff but you look back at it now with a perspective we have and you're like jesus christ like human beings are pretty capable of some pretty mm. fucking crazy ideas oh shit yeah oh yeah like i mean it, it would really even only be in this like the 60s and all that sort of stuff where people you know oh, black yeah. pe- black yeah. people had to f- fucking catch the, the a certain bus and sit up the back and yeah. weren't allowed to use the same toilets and rosa parks yeah, yeah. exactly like and i mean that you're talking like that's within you know our our parents lifetime mm. oh yeah exactly that's, yeah yeah it's, just, it's crazy to think that that you, you've come say 50 60 years or something from that which really isn't that big in periods of time and and you've definitely made a lot of evolution yeah and i think i think the whole sort of age of information and access to to broader knowledge now we understand that you know the the chromosomes or the dna that make up you know pigment color in the skin is like such a fucking small portion of what it means to be a human like and um and basically like our our genetic makeup is not different at all that might be two tiny little different threads that that mm. determine your eye color or your skin color or whatever but we're basically is. the same <laughs> organism <laughs> <laughs> props <laughs> pay that yeah oh exactly and and the fact that we barely even know all there is to know about that you know that little bit that's just us you know like our own biology and our own dna like we know probably about 50 percent of it there's heaps of it that we don't know about in terms of like Mm. dna and what it does and and all that sort of stuff as well which is fascinating because especially in a day and age of information like we've got with the internet up and rolling like we can know and solve some pretty advanced shit over the coming years if we can just trade information with each other. Yeah, yeah. But it but it is crazy, like, when you watch the Olympics and shit and you realise, like, you know, continually these world records are getting broken and yeah. broken and broken. And it's like we keep we keep getting bigger, faster, stronger. Definitely. It's yeah. Well, we were only discussing um, the other night sitting here watching the Olympic Games. Um, is it Victor Conti? Yeah, the, the guy who, PED were, guy. yeah, the PED guy who was like pump, uh, like um, pushing a whole bunch of steroids to like NFL players and mm. had so a big like, who's uh, who uh, list. Tim, Tim Montgomery was his sort of famous project. Right, yeah, right. He, got, he was a uh, hundred meter sprinter who they got him down from like a ten two to a nine seven nine, like world record holder. Right. In, in the space of like eighteen months. Oof. Yeah, so that was his big project, but he ended up getting busted. But yeah, because yeah. yeah. he he had a whole bunch of baseball and and NFL mm. dudes on on his roster and stuff oh, like shit, that as well, yeah. didn't yeah. he? He was yeah. the, the go to guy. Yeah, he's fam- famous for saying the drug testing in sports was IQ testing, not drug testing. Yeah, if you're yeah. smart enough, you just if you know the system, you just dodge dodgy the shit out of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That that they were sort of saying that um that pretty much the the huge 
like list of of people that like USADA or someone like that has to has to test that anybody can who registers for a an independent sort of like test through that person has to like is prone to their random selection so that's why like people on cards can go pretty much the whole card without anybody being tested is because there's never any random selection of those particular athletes mm-hmm. so um so yeah they can just like anyone can get anyone can get picked we've got the uh the dog fucking <laughs> whinging at the, whinging at the door here. There's, to get a re- out. there's a resident sausage dog here in the. Uh, <laughs> it, unless you hadn't uh, picked up on that already, he uh, was the person who bailed up the fucking <laughs> door-to-door salesman. Yeah, that that, that, that wasn't Jared. <laughs> 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 well, he's selling selling artwork door-to-door. That what? was random, wasn't it? Just a, a cold call on a Friday night what? with a guy holding a painting. What a low percentage marketing play that is. That people would actually, oh yeah, here, here, man, I'll, I've got two hundred bucks in my, or I've got yeah. fifty bucks in my thing. Oh, I'll just go grab That's it. A, yeah, I got some cash there. Oh, yeah, man, I like to look. I'll at grab that one actually. of these for you. Oh, I'll, I'll take it down the road, get it block mounted, do yeah. this, yeah. do that, <laughs> like get it up on the wall. So that's how I spent my weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hanging in the studio now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking space cadet. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say that seems like a pretty random decision. Oh, yeah. Eh? Oh, yeah, was he high? Don't know. Don't know. Chris saw him. I didn't. Yeah, I just stood from back here. Yeah, he's just on the stairs. He, he definitely looked like he was fairly jovial, but he if, he he was pretty happy to fuck off. Like he, he didn't need too much coaxing. Yeah. So you know that was that was a blast. Yeah, I remember being in um in LA one time, and a dude came to the door like just randomly asking for signatures for some petition, and he was like a seventeen year old um like just young dude just. Like and I don't know something about it. I was you know obviously in LA and see shit on the news in Koreatown of like fucking six people getting shot that day and stuff. Mm. And you're just like, uh, should I be worried about this? But yeah, what would you do if you you like just opened the door? Ha- happen to be sort of like similar time around here, like six seven o'clock. It's night time, and someone just got like knocks on your door and just like does a full home invasion on you, um, like guns <laughs> guns. What would you do? Guns. Um, I reckon yeah. I'd fucking make a cup of tea. And, uh, <laughs> I reckon I'd fuck that guy up. He <laughs> <laughs> no, just fucking cooperate. Go man. submissive. <laughs> yeah. Just cooperate. Man, have yeah. you have you heard Damn, that? Man, you want more than yeah. me? Like, that story with like, Brandon Vera and his and his coach who who got fucking bailed up in a home invasion. Right. And um and his is Brandon Vera's coach at the time who is a uh, uh, someone would have to look this up on Google, but he's a re- very very well recognized name in yeah. uh, in the MMA circles, and um. They got bailed up by two dudes with um with with weapons or whatever ski masks on. Bailed them into the back bedroom, like w- was taking one of them away. His coach to another room. Um, they suspect to pretty much kill them or whatever, and he ended up like attacking this guy, like um, and getting the weapon off him. Like shots were fired or whatever, and um. And then he ran out of the room and his mate just like uh, with the other gun just ended up running after him. And and there's uh, interviews with Brandon Vera like l- later in the piece, like sort of, you know, six, seven years into his UFC stint where he reckons he still had nightmares and stuff like that from waking up and reliving that event, you, you know. like pretty he traumatizing. Felt, he felt so helpless and, and thought he was going to die and, and all that sort of stuff. Wow. So yeah, even with his crazy training skill set. Yeah. You know, dude's coming in with... With yeah, a piece drawn on you, yeah, hey, all right. yeah. All right, what do you want yeah. me to do, bro? Like, I'll That's fucking it. lay down here. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let me go get the coconut oil. Yeah, <laughs> but but that 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 like martial arts background would have allowed his coach to his to coach to pretty much take the weapon from that other guy. Yeah, that other burglar. It sounds similar to a story that actually happened to a, a friend of mine, like not too many years out of high school. Same sort of deal, like fucking. People just jump the jump the back fence, one with a sawn off, and um, and basically like beat the shit out of my mate, and uh, got him and his girlfriend and another girl that was in the house all face down in the living room floor to like try and hog time and stuff like that, and then there was somehow a struggle with the gun, and the gun went off, and I think that scared the home invaders because they like you know weren't planning on on shooting anything, and um, yeah, and then just fucked off after that but um That's crazy lloyd that definitely would be traumatizing as Lo- lloyd irvin lloyd, lloyd irvin, irvin. Yeah, right. yeah yeah exactly there, there you go but yeah, yeah t- cr- crazy concept and you sort of don't really know how you're going to react until it would actually happen and oh and you would go touch, into touch you would, what it doesn't yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's, i don't want to have to hurt anyone you would oh. go into straight survival <laughs> mode though you'd probably you know just go numb like yeah 
in in crazy traumatic experiences like that. Hey man, if you're here doing this, you need it more than me. Just fucking help yourself. Like, do you need a hand taking it to the car? Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yeah. Do you need a hand, mate? Anything you can do. Like, I'm not here to fuck with anyone. Yeah, I'm not gonna die over my four hundred dollar TV. Yeah, Yeah. I'll I'll give you an hour head start. Listen, 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 listen. Lloyd Lloyd Irvin woke woke up in the pre-dawn hours of October fourth, two thousand and eight, to find that two armed men had broken into his suburban Maryland home and were standing over him as he slept. They instructed him to get up and join them as they rounded up the home's other occupants, which included Irvin's wife and son, who was um, then just four years old, as well as, uh, as well as Brandon Vera, who was staying with Irvin while he did pre-fight uh, while he did pre-fight training camp at Irvin's gym. Um, while one of the men held Vera and Irvin's family at gunpoint, the other led Irvin into a back bedroom. That's when Irvin saw the opening and took it, grabbing the gun, ejecting the ammunition clip and wrestling the weapon away from the gunman. Disarmed, the man shouted out, a warning, uh, warning his accomplice, um, that they, and they both fled the house, leaving Irvin, his family and Vera all unharmed but badly shaken. American hero styles. Yeah. Can you imagine that sort of scenario playing out where you're just getting led to a back bedroom by some dude with an with a Uzi on you or whatever that weapon was and then just thinking, nah, fuck this, man. This isn't going to end well. I'm going to ta- attack this prick. Like, yeah, I'm you like to him. think that it would end well and that you would, you know, be successful in, in trying to disarm the person yeah. or whatever. Like I remember that um, when that, is it Marn Morris or whatever, the guy that held up the Lint Cafe and shit? Held all those people hostage, mm. and you th- sort of like you like think to yourself, you know, would you just try and charge him if you'd been there for that many hours? Mm. It's one dude, and there's a whole bunch of you. Not if it was staying calm. Not not if it was if if the the scene was staying the same. I think you'd wait it out. But if you if he started getting seeing, agitated, yeah. and not, apparently, and that was what was going yeah. on. Yeah. And that dude was so unpredictable. They all reported he was just like you know you got some. F- legit fucking nutcase like taking control of the situation yeah. that you're in so it's like this guy's so fucking unpredictable so i'm not banking on anything yeah, but good point yeah but in in saying that though like i mean maybe if i'm brian stan i might fucking mm. i might charge I him tim time. kennedy or yeah he'd back himself yeah i'm not yeah. disarm this bitch <laughs> this dude's, like, this dude's in his 50s like i'm fucking yeah I'm, taken out fucking 10 at a time like. but it would all depend on your position I, I think that if it, absolutely if you were tim kennedy or you were brian stan you would have a, a huge ally in that place and you would definitely be trying to think of how you could disarm the situation but if he had you all up against the walls and was like nobody move and was swinging around wildly with a piece like I, I think even one of those guys would know that oh, i'll wait till uh, i get an opportunity Bro, one I of those opportunity. one of those guys would probably, create an opportunity. Would probably be willing if they were there in a partnership. Like those two just happen to be getting cash out from a bank, and some yeah. robbers come in, and there's a siege they're in or the whatever. Cafe that morning. Yeah, if they're, they're, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly right. We should have used that example. <laughs> that was more relevant to what we're talking about. If if those two guys are just sitting there having coffee and banana bread, <laughs> 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 if those two boys, <laughs> if those super two realistic. Boys, yeah. If those two boys are having, it an, could happen. Uh, having an almond milk cappuccino <laughs> and a fucking <laughs> banana bread. They're <laughs> sitting there and they can sort of eyeball each other and suss it. I reckon one of those boys would be willing to go out on their shield to be a hero and shit. Too. Yeah. One of that, two of them. One of them, I reckon, could probably take him in the right situation. But one to distract and get shot, and then Tim Kennedy to just shoot that double leg. It's over. Yeah. Like and and anybody, everyone, everyone goes home safe. Anybody who doesn't know the MMA people that we're talking about, I mean, they are just. Marine, Dis- you know, distinct, military yeah. vets, distinguished you know, snipers, you know, t- Texas Rangers or whatever they're I think called. Bri- uh, Brian had a Brian Stan has a silver star, like a bravery that's award right, for some that's sort of right. really heavy shit that went yeah. on where he just put himself on the line, just thought about himself. I thought about his team more than himself and managed to get away with it. Like yeah, uh, the, the, there was a there was a. Have you ever heard the Jocko Willing? Um, uh, interview on Joe Rogan or on Tim Ferriss? No. Oh man, In- interesting dude. Like who is um, black belt in, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but just also, um, you know, did heaps of tours or Iraq and all this sort of stuff. And he talks about stories of just effectively being like a Baghdad SWAT unit, where like they would just gra- gain il- intel every single day, and then they would plan an attack on someone's house where they would go in like storm the place, grab the person that they were after and then they would take them back and interrogate them through the day and then get somebody else to um, to target from that. But he was just talking about, you know, like how how crazy that would be as a job to do that seven days a week, 
each night, you know, you sleep during the day, then, okay, we're, we're about to kick someone's door in and, you know, take them at gunpoint tonight, every single night. It'd be nuts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like something that, I guess, as a kid, as a young young fella, you watch action movies and shit like that and you fantasize glorify about it. it but yeah. yeah, and glorify the hell out of it. Yeah. I think in reality, it would be a fucking terrifying thing, like oh, yeah. witnessing like war zones and, and crazy stuff like that where you basically just ignoring everybody's civil rights and you're going in to get some mm. somebody who's evil you know yeah and and just looking to cover your ass at all costs mm. you know i mean just it's literally fighting for your life could they're trying to kill you and you're trying to kill them that would be a crazy crazy thing yeah i guess i guess it's probably one of those things that it's like you either it's either in you or it's not you know some people naturally gravitate towards the military and stuff like that and they thrive off that discipline and they've got the mental fortitude to sort of deal with those situations like you know the the thing rogan sort of always spruiks on his podcast is that um the majority of the high level guys like the the marines and stuff like that don't suffer the same sort of ptsd that Mm. um that a lot of the you know i guess lower paid entry level types serving positions in the military come away with so yeah I don't know. I've I've actually known like friends of mine in my life and stuff like that, and even from a young age, I guess it, lots of them coming from military families as well. But you can sort of tell that that's that's the way that they'll go. They've got a military mind, you know. Mm. And uh, I think phew, it'd be the last thing that I could I could really ever do. Obviously, if it was a different time and and there was conscription and and stuff like that, and you needed to go fight to to defend your country and stuff like that, you'd like to think that you'd step up. But um, but it's not something that I reckon I would I would pursue as a, as a career opportunity like I- in my lifetime. I don't know how how I'd go with go- just a, just having a, orders and all that sort of ba- stuff. The again. basic training, the twelve weeks of just getting broken down, would be mm. w- is where I would tap. Like yeah, from mm. the from the moment that you step off the bus, there. Th- this is all allegedly. This is f- just stories that I've heard, but mm. I've had dealings with plenty of people in the military yeah. now, and through and through different sort of. Um, forces too but military just getting off the bus and just getting blasted from there to the moment that you leave like 12 weeks later sun up to sundown you're a fucking piece of shit <laughs> absolute piece of shit seriously like just some of the stories just that getting I've heard yelled the at. yeah just get just getting yelled at not being able to have anything back not even being able to make eye contact with yeah. these people yeah, there like just be don't even fucking look at me like that sort of stuff if someone's berating you in the face like. yeah and i think for, uh, again allegedly what i've heard is that they they purposefully fuck with you as well mm. like i had a friend mm. tell me as part of basic training they had to do something where they were basically out in some long grass in in a paddock somewhere and they had to like be vigilant because there was something that was going to happen so they had to like keep keep their attention going keep camouflaged in whatever position they were in and and like sniper styles and they left them there for 24 hours Mm. like just sitting at attention just waiting for something to happen for 24 fucking hours oh. like and what a mental battle that would yeah. be there'd be people that would go i'm fucking tapping yeah, out on this the fuck sleep this. sleep deprivation i'll, I'll just be laying there with my gun just like <laughs> just, just, just like totally completely like, asleep, yeah, yeah. Completely yeah, asleep. Just taking your little 20 here <laughs> yeah. and there like. just like well w- once i hear a couple of 22s go off man yeah. that'll wake yeah. up yeah. anyway so <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be ready then like. and that's why none of us are in the military yeah, yeah. 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 Dead right. you know what i mean you've got to have that mindset where you're like yeah i could do that that's fucking that's yeah. i've got the, the competition in me to do that yeah you know? exactly Be- between that and the piss test i'm cooked <laughs> 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 allegedly <laughs> i wonder how much they actually do drug test the military because not for I, steroids yeah i reckon that there'd be a lot of things that if they had to you know test for those sort of things they'd they'd probably halve the people that they've got in there maybe uh, that's maybe, apparently maybe, like maybe, a, yeah, a big sort of common thing is is that they just let people juice hard because they want you know big big fucking intimidating yeah. soldiers that's it they're mm. talking if you're talking performance enhancing drugs then hey absolutely it's gonna if it's gonna help our boys yeah then i have no absolutely no yeah. issue with it too. and isn't it funny that it's like okay so in sport we classify these things as these these are illegal drugs these you're not allowed to mm. enhance your biology or your performance yeah. with these because mm. this is a sport and, and it's fair play and stuff yeah. like that but then in other ways of the species yeah, it's yeah. like oh no no no, steroids are yeah. all right because yeah. this this helps our yeah. cause you yeah know? boys you could be walking 5ks with a 40 kilo pack on Hey, if you want to get up to 220, exactly. 225 pounds, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. feel free. Feel free here's here's you know, the doctor's that's yeah. right. Uh, yeah, and I, yeah. And I, and I f- fully understand that and respect that. If those if those defensemen want to go down that path, then 
Yeah. And if and even if it helps their mindset too, potentially as well, they're going in with more confidence because they know mm. they're sourced to the fucking eyes. <laughs> like, what's yeah. what's your opinion on like the potential for a clean competition as well as a dirty competition. So like an Olympics where you're allowed to juice and you're allowed to see what, what levels you can get to. I, I don't think we'll see it happen personally. I think But it, it, as, as far as you're concerned, like would, no. you, would it be something you would want to see or ethically you'd be against it? Mate, I don't know. It, it's hard to say. I'd probably, if they're all dirty, then it, it's still a level playing field. You'd probably so tune I in, wouldn't you? Pro- yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would to see, yeah, to see what go. happened, but... Chances are we're already fucking watching it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, exactly. No, nothing surprises you these days with who with who, yeah. who pops and. I think I think you got to try and keep some sort of regulation on it, at least to a degree. That there's always going to be obviously that ebb and flow battle of of the the dealers versus the you know the pharmacies or, or whoever's like making it versus the guys that are actually getting caught. But but even still, you got to try and keep a lid on it because if you give up, then it does just become a, a PED sport. And then you never get it back if you if you give up in the first place. But just, uh, the athletes there just fucking so much back knee and the blocks and all their singlets and everything just sourced to the eyes. But there was a um, the ten thousand was on today at the Olympics and a pom- uh, pommy fella went back to back. He and managed to win the race despite being knocked over as well. Like he, he fell up, fell over like in in a collision had to pick himself up. Probably lost five or ten seconds and still managed right. to win. Like, do they do that around the track only? Yeah, yeah. just yeah. laps, man. Yeah. yeah. 20, Wasn't there laps? some woman the other night that like beat her world record by ages, and she was like lapping people? Yeah, in the fucking yeah that, race. I think that might have been in the women's ten thousand. Yeah, in so the women's. Yeah, like a, like a something like a fourteen or a seventeen second world record. Oh my god! Yeah, here piss in this cup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just and melts is, it. <laughs> isn't it funny that like that? That's what we keep saying whenever we see uh, an unbelievable performance. Because you become it's like, yeah, oh, jaded. Dr- drug yeah. test that bird. You know, like but sixteen yeah. second yeah, world record. Right. Yeah. Like, that, what the fuck you're is winning you're winning there. by the length of the straight but there was an uh, american swimmer as well in the 800 meters the ledecky won by a lap in the uh, 800 and smashed the world record as well yeah but true I was, people just peak at the right time too yeah. there's definite potential does hackett still have the 1500 meter world record no i don't no. know I don't have to check. I, i'm gonna say no yeah i'm yeah. gonna say no but uh i'll find out yeah yeah, some of those, world, it, it's incredible how long, sorry to interrupt, but like, um, it's incredible how long some of those world records do stand for though. Mm, like imagine if you could just troll through all the world records for all the Olympic sports that were on at this event and mm. just see that, that some, how long late some of them went back. You There'd reckon, be some old ones. You reckon Grant Hackett let his hair down after he w- got his world record <laughs> or what? <laughs> just went, went around allegedly smacking oh. some bitches. Yeah, oh, <laughs> see a fly on the wall yeah. in that, uh, that kick on. Good <laughs> Lord. Shout out Grant Hackett. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> what you looking up, D? I'm trying to look up um, if uh, Hackett still got the record. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. I'm going to say no. Oh yeah, maybe he's actually lost it at a Worlds or something mm. since then. I think, it, sure. I think it might have been a Turkish bloke that broke it. Fuck! Imagine if you got that right. Um, yeah, it's been broken. An Italian. Italian. Ah, oh, right on. Gregorio Paltarini. He won today. Oh, he won he? today. Oh, yeah, shit. There you go. He yeah, fucking he, uh, killed it, man. This <laughs> guy. He went out so hard. I was like, how fast is this guy swimming? Yeah. You know how they're just doing like a two beat kick? Yeah. This guy just set out to just break their hearts. Yeah. He's swimming like he's swimming at an aggressive four hundred. Yeah, true. Just took it out. You know, he's just not he's just not coming back to them. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this guy's gonna run not run out of path. He was favoured to win. But they just couldn't fucking close the gap. He knocked a uh, he knocked a minute fifty four off it. Holy Hackett's moly! Hackett's was fourteen ten ten, and he did fourteen eight six. Holy! Well, I knocked a second and a half off it. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. God sorry. Damn. Shit. I was gonna say a minute, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check him. For, did he wear flippers? <laughs> or wore a sweater blades. <laughs> Piss in the cup, mate. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like, is that guy wearing skin coloured Churchills? <laughs> For all you body waters out there. Uh, <laughs> is it just a fucking wearing an Evan Rude on the uh, back? <laughs> <laughs> good at 20. <laughs> uh, good old boat hire joints. How good are that? Oh, uh, man. And especially like when the, the majority of the time where you use them is because you can't afford or you're not responsible enough to actually own a boat yourself. Yeah. So you go and rent someone else's and just run it over sandbars. And you know. Remember the disaster we had at the Southport boat rent when we were launching yeah. for uh, <laughs> the winter... We, for a while there, we had a t- uh, like a fishing tournament annually called the Winter Classic that all the boys would get together and go on and 
trying to launch this boat down at Southport one day. I swear people were lined up like 10 deep at the boat <laughs> ramp waiting for us to get rid of it. And people just watching us like the blatant hire boat too, this bright yellow thing that we've obviously yeah. just hired. Towing it behind up. like a 1980s Civic down the highway. Yeah, was, it was Fuey's RAV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few of his white little right. rav yeah, that we had right. towing it, and it was that's real right. like dodgy, dodgy hours getting down there. Like, oh yeah, but we we we, we powered on with that houseboat into some pretty sketchy places of the Southport Seaway, though. That's right. Like, we, we, it was dead set only probably like a six or an eight horsepower motor on that thing, but we did, we were just redlining that yeah. into oh, the, into the current. Not to mention somebody pulled the anchor up on the houseboat, I think, as well. And at overnight the anchor no, pulled. We yeah. D- yeah, we dragged it. We yeah. dragged it like five hundred meters and yeah. ended up like a meters away from a shipping Dude, channel. No, we yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, it like we were just like, we're like moving a post we're outside the window. Uh, like, oh, that's oh, right. We, and we wanted to uh, on the first afternoon. We were camped in this perfect spot. We had coverage. Everyone, t- there was a couple little tenders there that we could take out too. Like there was a higher one that you boys putted around in, and they were tied to the back of the boat. And we thought, for whatever reason, like people are well inebriated by this point. Yeah, getting festive on the boat. Thought we're going to go park it up the corner of the wall so we can just drop off and get dewy. So yeah. we ended up going to park it like the southern end of the wall. And um, like, oh, no, fuck this. We're way too exposed. It was windy. Yeah, starting to get yeah. a bit rough. Yeah. But oh, we'll take it back. And we're trying to angle back into from to the perfect spot where we had. In the meantime, while we're up there, other boats have arrived. So we're parking it. And I'll never forget, Tim was driving the boat. And we've started to whip around and the tenders are going swinging really wide and almost went into this bloke's Riviera. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, no. It, it was a matter of feet <laughs> away. And this guy's standing out on his deck. I'll never forget it, man. He's standing out on his deck. This bloke's there like, um, yeah. what the fuck he is doing? Like, are you gonna, is it going to miss? And uh, Michael, um, Dave, one of the other boys on there, you remember him, Chris. I remember he, like, he was absolutely freaking out and so was I. I'm there pulling my hair out like, oh, yeah. no, this, this shit's going to get expensive. Oh, but, man. Uh, for, fortunately, it missed, but just fucking amateurs in boats. It can, can be dangerous. Oh, definitely. I remember the very first Winter Classic that we ever went on where um, we were pulling out of the marina and it was night time and we got there and, and we just pretty much were, were hungry to just take the boat for a spin and just got there and like the, my mate at the time knocked it into reverse and was just driving out of the marina at the tweed and just pretty much threw, threw it into um threw it into forwards was just like caning it in, in houseboat terms so you know like a few knots or whatever it is um towards this big bloody um like concrete reta- or like sort of big cinder block sort of like retaining wall that goes out in the water just didn't see it at all <laughs> T- uh, Tim and Fuey or two of our buddies were just like uh, asleep on the floor of the houseboat and um, and literally I was on the front of the houseboat and he's just full th- full throttle like towards it but he just thinks it's black so um so I'm standing <laughs> up the front and I'll, I'll just go seeing this wall just approaching and approaching and approaching and approaching and then at the, like probably about 10 meters out I'm like holy fuck he can't see this wall and just pretty much like going oi, 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 like the wall the wall the wall and he's just like holy shit, like didn't know that there was one, like dropped it into reverse. But obviously because it's so gutless, those things, it just sort of like dropped into reverse and then it sort of, but it's still like powering forward, but just with less steam. So like we just keep coming in and like with it in reverse and then it comes right up. So we're pretty much like a foot or two away from hitting or colliding with the wall. And then we finally stop and then just start moving back. And I was just like, oh, Oh, we could have just wrecked the boat on the Balls first in your night. Mouth. Yeah. yeah, Jesus. Oh, just the shit that you. Imagine do. having to call the company. Oh, hey, hey guys. <laughs> yeah, <we're>, um, <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's actually on the bottom of the clearance. Like, <laughs> fucking, yeah. We uh, don't we worry. We're pretty disappointed too. Our, <laughs> our, our, our phones and wallets were in there and stuff. So. <laughs> Dr- drove the houseboat at full noise, like straight into a retaining wall. Can you imagine <laughs> explaining that? Oh, yeah. Like what, what, oh, we, we so what got, happened? We couldn't see it. Like, yeah, yeah. Here, can you scrape this along your tongue and then <laughs> blow in here, please? Oh. Oh. oh, and 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 that's what would happen too. Oh, yeah. Shit. yeah that's marine what police. I think on that up. trip it was like a shovel nose shark, and yeah, oh. there was some small fish that won it. There was not <laughs> not that yeah. many fish caught. Gaffin, gaffin release. This fellow there, gaffin release. Oh, that was a term that came out of it. There was this tiny little. For anyone who doesn't know, me it was the first time I knew what a gaff was, but it's like a long long sickle shaped hook that you basically <laughs> like spit <laughs> you spear fish with to drag them on yeah, board yeah. <laughs> and mate, the idea of the tournament the winner it's the longest fish on a brag mat is the winner so this guy was desperate just to register a score 
<laughs> and this thing would have been like, <laughs> and we're talking Jewfish. They can get up to like, you're talking a hundred centimeters, sort of like plus, around the whole around plus, the Holy Grail yeah. is that sort of triple triple like the hundred. And um, this thing was best part of forty five centimeters. <laughs> He's fucking calling for the gaff and just goes, <laughs> just straight into this thing's mouth and just skull drags it back in. It's like the length of the fucking laptop, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh, we'll try, we'll try and re- we'll try and release it." <laughs> throws Belly it, up. Throws it back in, just upside down, upside down. <laughs> like, oh, mate, you're a fucking grub. Like, uh, and didn't he, I don't think he even measured it. <laughs> didn't even register it. But, oh, uh, that, that was such, that was definitely such a legal fun, size, though. Oh, yeah, well, for <laughs> sure, for sure, yeah, m- most definitely. <laughs> but, yeah. You've always been a catch and release guy, eh, Chris? Yeah, always, always been catch and release. Uh, it, it's probably just the the effort that you've also got to go to as a result of trying to keep fish. Because if you're out for a fish, and, and I've definitely been really into it to the point where you put in real, real long hours doing it in, in strange locations at strange times of night and all that sort of stuff, that um, you want to end your night short by having to, to pretty much fill it something, get it back, put it on ice, all that sort of stuff. Mm. So just depends if you, whether you, you fish for sport or you fish for for food or whatever. I've throw them up. back. Throw them back. I'm always a fan of that. Yeah. Plus, I don't. I wouldn't even know where to start with proper filleting of fish anyway. Like uh, that's not really my go. Like, exactly. And unless you've got the right knives for it and you've had the practice, you just end up butchering it anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah. unless you catch something that's really sizable that you can get some big lumps of of meat off type yeah. thing. Yeah. Better off putting it back so you can catch it next time when it's a bit bigger and yeah. keep the ecosystem going anyway. For sure. Yeah. If it's sure. recreational fishing, you know. But um. But yeah, I mean, if you've got the knowledge to fill it, fill it, then go for it. It's mm. basically sourcing your own uh, animal proteins. So that's. Do you think you'd, you'd ever have it in you to to go and hunt something, to to shoot something? I think maybe. Like, I mean, if you can go fishing, that's essentially hunting, basically mm. there. But I think for me, I could if it was if it was like a sustainable type thing that I knew I I wasn't like tapping into a, any sort of. Um, you know, low numbered population of a certain species and it was something that I was going to use and eat because I, I'm a meat mm-hmm. eater anyway. So, I mean, for me to be able to buy steak from the grocery store but not be able to to shoot something to eat it mm. is pretty, like, fucking hypocritical and backwards, yeah. really. For That's sure. it. I, I would love to go... If I had the big ice box at home where I could just stock up on the best part of 8 to 12 months' worth of meat in one exchange, by no yeah. mean would I get enjoyment of going out oh, i probably would enjoy the process of g- like killing your own wild Sourcing game and it would be own, it'd be yeah. sati- it'd mm. be satisfying absolutely but um at the same time i, I wouldn't want to end anything's life yeah that'd time, be the tough part of it yeah, for yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah it would be it. difficult i heard a um a thing on a podcast i think once that was saying basically two people eating an average of a pound of meat per day um could sustain themselves for a year off off one cow so really, and they reckon you know you can you can source a farm a farm that has cows that you know what the cow's been fed from the time it was born and all yeah. that sort of stuff and it, and it's all sustainable and stuff. You you don't obviously kill it. The farmer kills it, but and he like you know debows it and cuts all the meat mm. up for you if you've got a big enough yeah. deep freeze. Yeah. Just freeze that shit up for twelve months. We had our shit together. We should go thirds in that. That would be incredible. Yeah. Imagine mm. that if we all just threw in eight hundred bucks and you bought a beast. And you've got your 12 months worth of stuff there. Imagine having a few, like three or four cows kicking around an acre or two oh. that um, that you just, what, you milked a couple of them and, and had a couple of them that you just like re- them r- reared. <laughs> 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 just waited for them to fall asleep, just hit them with, like, a, with these linebacker shots. <laughs> like. <laughs> you'd come That's off a, second like best, a legit like, thing, eh? Yeah, people go, and, and what, they can't get back up or? I don't know. Is it uh, d- I just think what they what fall it over. They can. They just fall over. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Right. Yeah, they just just bowl them over or whatever. But fuck me, man, you'd you'd need to be hitting it with some force to oh. get it. Yeah, like it'd be obviously a couple they kilograms. Yeah, they fuck wouldn't yeah. they wouldn't have a great lateral movement, so that no. that, that would be on almost on your non-existent, side. wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be pr- yeah. Actually, it yeah. would be. It's an odd design, isn't it? They're yeah. just on stilts, these giant yeah. fucking things, with giant yeah. meat machines. And if they're standing up, it would just be a big gut with overhang yeah like if they were an upright animal like imagine a cow if they were able to stand up on their yeah. back legs fully but right? you could you're also talking like something that is a thousand kilos in some instances mm-hmm. versus even even if a guy was hitting it and you know he was 85 kilos mm. it, it's still 10 times his size can you imagine trying to shoulder charge something 10 yeah. times your size like yeah, you I'm, you would probably like you eight, know, you're looking at jesus a, like what the fuck is that eight, 84 kilo Yoel is going to fucking tip the yeah, shit out of that yeah. cow. That's Yoel like, Romero exactly. would be able to tip it. It's like Frankie charging. Low body height. Yeah. Fucking boom. Boom. 
Yeah, he's a... a, a Yol versus a cow. Yeah. When's Yol back? Shout out for Tito Brothers. Yeah, I don't yeah. know when Yol... Uh, His suspension's up or whatever. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't know, but... Be yeah. good to see him back. It's never, never a dull moment with that guy around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's a finisher. No I forget wanna, Jesus. Want to get Luke Rockhold back in the in mm. the in the cage. Chris Weidman, I see, is training again. So some exciting fights that uh, hopefully will materialise in the in the coming weeks, That's and it. we'll uh, we'll look to discuss those as uh, as they come to fruition. But yeah, it's been a good little hit out, boys. We'll uh, we'll probably wrap it up there. But um, it was uh, it was good to catch up with everybody, and we'll uh, we'll speak to you again soon. For sure. We'll endeavour to bring you some more content maybe next week. Um, we'll see how we go around 202. If not, um, War Connor, any any last uh, any last predictions? You're going. We've got two Connors and one Nate, so That's let's yeah. see. Let's see who... Uh, <laughs> Who's got the egg on their face come next Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All righty, peeps. Peace. Peace. Right. See ya.